Hi dear students, welcome back to the second session of bacterial photosynthesis. And uh, as we had mentioned, bacterial photosynthesis uh, consists of two types of photosynthesis. Either the oxygenic photosynthesis in which oxygen has been involved or the anoxygenic photosynthesis in which oxygen is not been involved. The oxygenic photosynthesis, as we had mentioned earlier, has been carried out by cyanobacteria, whereas we have the anoxygenic photosynthesis, uh, which is mainly been carried out by the green sulfur bacteria, the purple bacteria, the filamentous anoxygenic phototrops, phototropic acidobacteria, heliobacteria, etc. And here, uh, it mainly uses bacterial chlorophyll instead of the chlorophyll and involves one photosystem or the photosystem 1 to generate ATP in a cyclic manner. Of course, in the process of an oxygenic photosynthesis, carbon dioxide has also been consumed. And uh, you can see that uh, it has mainly been used to create organic compounds such as sulfur or fumarated compounds or fumarate compounds instead of oxygen. So, the liberation of oxygen does not happen within an anoxygenic photosynthesis. That is a way by which, uh, that is one of the way by which the oxygenic photosynthesis and the anoxygenic photosynthesis differs. Uh, when you talk about pho anoxygenic photosynthesis, five different bacterial phyla are mainly being involved. The proteobacteria involving the purple sulfur and the purple non-sulfur bacteria. The chlorobi involving the green sulfur bacteria. The chlorogigalexy involving the uh, green non-sulfur bacteria. The phileobacteria as well as the acidobacteria. And the difference is as I told you, it involves a single photosystem and it does not involve oxygen. And uh, they are restricted to a cyclic photophosphorylation and are, are unable to produce oxygen from water. So let's move on to the light reactions of uh, an oxygenic photosynthesis. During an oxygenic photosynthesis, the light absorbing pigments called the bacteriochlorophylls absorbs light. And in some bacteria, uh, these pigments are located in membranous vesicles called the chlorosomes. And you can see that the absorption maximum of this bacterial chlorophylls are, not, are at a longer wavelength than those of the normal chlorophylls. Now, chlorophyll, bacterial chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, they have either 775 and 790 nanometer absorption maximum respectively. And in in vivo conditions, you can see that it is about 830 to 890 nanometers for bacterial chlorophyll A and about 1020 to 1040 nanometer for bacterial chlorophyll B. Now, you might think, what is this absorption maximum? Every component uh, or every pigment can absorb light at a specific wavelength. Now, in the case of bacterial chlorophyll A, in vivo means inside the bacteria, it will absorb wavelength between 830 to 890 nanometer. So, in this picture, you can see that the photosystem which has been depicted over here in purple non-sulfur bacteria is given as P870. P870 means it can absorb light at 870 nanometer. So, the unlike the normal chlorophylls, the bacterial chlorophylls, will absorb light of a higher energy and so when it absorbs light energy it gets excited and the electrons or the energy associated with it is been given to bacteriophyton and then after that it goes to quinone then it goes to the cytochrome bf complex cytochrome ct and then it comes back to photosystem 860 or the p870 and during this process Succinate is also added and fumarate has been formed. And then what happens? NAD plus is also be regenerated. So this is a process of anoxygenic photosynthesis, which mainly happens in anoxygenic bacteria. And different bacteria will have a different anoxygenic photosynthesis. The ETC might slightly vary, but I've given you one example for it. So let's not go into the details further. But after the light reaction, let it be oxygenic or anoxygenic, we have a dark cycle or the dark reaction 
which is a light independent reaction and it is called the Calvin cycle. So whatever the bacterial photosynthesis let it be, let it be a light reaction or a dark reaction. No, let it be a, a what is it, oxygenic or an oxygenic. It both contains a light reaction and a light independent dark reaction. So we had previously mentioned all the light reactions. Now I'm commonly explaining to you the dark reaction. The dark reaction is called the Calvin cycle or the Melbourne Calvin cycle. And it mainly consists of three different stages. The first one is the fixation. The second one is the reduction. And the third one is the regeneration. In the fixation, an enzyme called the riblose bisphosphate carboxylase or Rubisco, it catalyzes the addition of carbon dioxide to RUBP or riblose bisphosphate so that 3-phosphoglycerate is being formed. And the second step, the reduction happens, that is, six molecules of both ATP and NADPH are used to convert the 3-phosphoglycerate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phospho, uh, sorry, it's converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and some glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is then used uh, to build the glucose. Now, the next step that which we have is a regeneration step. So, in the regeneration step, you have the what? Glyceraldi the remaining glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is not used to synthesize glucose. And it is used to generate RUBP, enabling the system to continue the carbon dioxide fixation. So do remember, we have three steps. The first step in which carbon dioxide is fixed and converted into 3-phosphoglycerate, not glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. If I have made a mistake, do remember that. It's carbon dioxide is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate. And after that, 3-phosphoglycerate is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And in the last step, what? Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is... Uh, used some amount of uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is used to generate RUBP so that the carbon dioxide fixation continues. You can have a look at this. This is the schematic representation of the cycle. Three molecules of glucose, sorry, of carbon dioxide is fixed by Rubisco enzyme resulting in the formation of 3-phosphoglycerate and 3-phosphoglycerate has been further reduced to form glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and in this when six molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is being formed, one molecule of uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is for the generation of glucose, whereas five molecules are being used for the regeneration of RUBP so that the carbon dioxide fixation or the photosynthesis cycle will continue. So, I guess you understood uh, the process of photosynthesis. Uh, with this, we come to an end of the session. Thank you.